Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'd move on to the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move the minutes of the City Council meeting held September 22nd, 2014 be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Did everyone have a chance to read those minutes? There's no errors or omissions that we need to correct. Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and we'd move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Thiessen. I move that uh, Council uh, accept the adoption of the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. That motion carries as well. Uh, and that brings us to the delegation portion of our council meeting, I think everybody's favorite time. Uh, this is an opportunity for anybody in the community to come forward on any community-related matter that isn't the subject of a public hearing. Uh, we have this opportunity at every regular council meeting, and so uh, we want to ensure that community is aware that that time exists. Is there anybody that wanted to come forward on a matter that isn't the subject of a public hearing? I see a group that may be here for a public hearing, um, but I don't see anybody else coming forward. So we'll close our delegation portion of the agenda. And uh, we'll do that. We'll move on into public hearings. And we'll start with item 6.1, um, the Arbor Hills Area Structure Plan, uh, the Auto, the uh, Trader Ridge Outline Plan, and Associated Land Use Bylaw Amendments. Mr. Welton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. ISL Engineering and Land, on behalf of the landowner, has submitted applications to amend the Arbor Hills Area Structure Plan, adopt the Trader Ridge Outline Plan, and amend the Land Use Bylaw. Trader Ridge is located at the north end of the city, uh, north of 132nd Avenue and directly west of 100th Street. The site consists of three parcels, um, uh, two uh, 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 lots, and then the remainder of the uh, southwest quarter section. Lots 1A and 2 are already zoned CA, arterial commercial, so the land use of bylaw on amendment only applies to the re rem remnant of the quarter section. The area is currently mostly under agricultural use. The smaller of the two lots uh, in the southeast corner of the area contains a farm equipment dealership and the larger lot is vacant. The land's really relatively flat, slopes from the northeast to the southwest towards the future storm pond. The industrial area, uh, A industrial area, is located in the county uh, to the north. The area to the east across Hunter Street is also industrial. North Ridge across 132nd Avenue to the south is a mix of commercial and residential. And to the west is Arbor Hills 2, which is a developing residential area. The existing development concept in the Arbor Hills Area Structure Plan shows Arbor Hills as a primarily commercial area, uh, which is identified in grey on the, on the map. Um, the proposed amendment uh, would make it a uh, exclusively commercial area. Uh, a storm channeled uh, and pond are required to accommodate storm drainage in the area. Existing and proposed maps, uh, which, uh, which you have before you, uh, show the proposed uh, changes to the area structure plan. The amendment also proposes changing to the future network in accordance with the, uh, I guess it's the 132nd Avenue Transportation Functional Study. The uh, land use concept for Trader Ridge shows the area is intended to develop as a commercial area in accordance with the A area structure plan. The south, central, and east areas identified in pink are, attended, are intended to develop as highway commercial uh, to take advantage of the exposure to traffic on 100th Street and 132nd Avenue, both of which are arterial roads. The west area in red is intended to develop as a general commercial area. Uh, uh, general commercial is intended to develop with less intensity and with lower building height than highway commercial. A drainage channel and storm pond will be located in the southwest corner of the plan area. As is the case with all storm ponds, the location of the pond is largely determined by the topography of the site and is at or near the lowest part of the site. The drainage channel is required to redirect to direct storm water from 140th Avenue to the pond and eventually onto Bear Creek. The channel also provides a buffer between the commercial and uh, commercial development in this area and the single family detached. Uh, development that will is occurring in the Arbor Hills 2 area. Uh, the brown line on map 5, which I don't have in front of me, uh, uh, shows the drainage channel will also provide a pedestrian link at, uh, from the end of the trails in Arbor Hills 2, south to 132nd Avenue and west to 102nd Street. 
All the internal roads in the area would be commercial collector roads. Uh, the typical cross-section for commercial collectors would have sidewalks on both sides. Uh, the pedestrian links uh, show uh, where, the pedestri uh, where the sidewalks are likely to be wider. Because Trader Ridge is an exclusively commercial area, the provision of municipal reserve was not considered necessary. Municipal money in lieu of municipal reserve in the amount of 5.02 hectares or 12.4 acres would be paid to the city instead. The value would be determined in accordance with section 6671A of the Municipal Government Act at the time of subdivision. And the amount that I have identified in the report, there is a uh, municipal reserve uh, caveat registered on the title indicating that that is the amount of uh, municipal reserve that the city is entitled to. The outline plan accommodates the possible development of a city entrance feature in the northwest corner of the area adjacent to 100th Street, uh, which is denoted by the asterisks on the plan. If the city requires any land for the, for the entrance feature, that amount would be treated as municipal reserve dedication. Trader Ridge is bounded on the east by 100th Street and on the south by 132nd Avenue, both of which are arterial roads and are designed to accommodate a large volume of traffic. Within Trader Ridge, all roads will be designed and built as collector roads and designed to accommodate commercial traffic. Because all the internal roads will be collectors, they will be all be accommodated to transit, which provides flexibility in transit planning routes through the area. <laughs> Proposed 139th Avenue connection to 100th Street is in accordance with the 132nd tra fun Transportation Functional Study. However, this connection to 100th Street will require the closure of 140th Avenue directly to the north. That portion of 148th Avenue is within the city boundary, which is the so-called shark fin. Engineering Services uh, does not have a complete traffic assessment for the land. Uh, the north connection to 140th Avenue and internal intersection signalization will require additional transportation analysis pr prior to subdivision approval. As I mentioned previously, the two existing lots in the southeast corner of the plan area have already been zoned CA arterial commercial, and the remainder of the area, therefore, uh, is being zoned from urban reserve to CA and CG in accordance with the map in front of you. The proposed amendment, uh, uh, again, uses the uh, arterial commercial uh, to take advantage of the exposure to the site, uh, and most of the area is being rezoned re re to CA. Uh, the the uh, amendment proposes rezoning the land along the west boundary adjacent to Arbor Hills um, because it provides lower maximum building heights and because it allows less intense uses. This makes CG more compatible with the adjacent future residential area in Arbor Hills. Uh, the city is required to hold public hearing before considering bylaws to adopt the amend the land use bylaw or area structure, plot, plot structure plans and to advertise the public hearing in accordance with the requirements of the Act. Advertising and other notification has occurred in, in accordance with the requirements of the Act. In addition, the public consultation for the uh, preparation of the uh, uh, Trader Ridge Outline Plan as a statutory plan was also undertaken uh, in accordance with the Act. Uh, uh, the amendments are hierarch hierarchical, hierarchical in nature and should be considered in the order presented. Um, the proposed bylaw will allow the subdivision and development of Trader Ridge as a commercial area in accordance with CA arterial commercial and CG general commercial districts in the land use bylaw and planning and development supports the adoption of the uh, bylaws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Mr. Welton. Uh, any questions at this time for administration? Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have a Dan question? Uh, the storm water management area in Trader Ridge area, is it just going to be an empty little grassy field or are we going to have like stuff around there for actually people to have lunch from working businesses and maybe where the houses are going to be living just to the uh, west of there, actually play soccer down in there or has that been looked at or uh, are we just going to have grass or weeds growing in it? Mr. Uh, through the mayor, the uh, I think that that is better directed to the applicant. The applicant uh, does those negotiations with the City Engineering Services Department regarding the amenities that occur around a pond. And uh, I think the applicant is probably in a better position to identify what sorts of amenities they're proposing in and around the storm pond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Shelton. Any other questions at this time for administration? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Bill. Um, I just have a question uh, in regards to what it says in the report here. It says, uh, 
Engineering, Engineering Services does not have a complete traffic assessment for these lands. The north connection to 140th Avenue and internal intersection signalization will require additional transportation analysis prior to subdivision approval. Uh, my question is uh, not necessarily about 140th Avenue, but more along the lines of uh, 102nd Street. Um, there's uh, residential and commercial that are going in there. And I just, uh, maybe you can enlighten me as to how the city can properly address the subdivision of the land properly without uh, having a proper transportation analysis done first. Um, could you, I guess, explain a little bit more with respect to the residential that you're talking about? Well, there's a couple things, actually. Thanks for asking, Dan. Um, uh, it says that we're going to have room for transit road width uh, on along 132nd Avenue on one of the maps. It says we're going to widen the road uh, so transit can be built to connect to those areas. Um, but I'm just thinking of traffic volume counts, and it's pretty closely connected to the county. So people traveling in and through might take that 132nd Avenue, 102nd Street, just to get to like the main arterial without having to turn on to 100 Street. Um, I just, I guess I'm really asking about traffic volume. Like, is what's it currently, and uh, is it? Do we expect it to increase, and are we going to address that when we build the road? Wasn't there, um, Mr. Well? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not sure if, if Norm is able to answer the questions with respect to the uh, 132nd Avenue transportation study, which I, I believe sort of went into the uh, traffic volumes and that sort of thing at that intersection of 102nd and 132nd. Mr. Kyle, can you speak to? The the current traffic study we've received from the developer did not analyze the uh, the impacts of the connection that uh, would occur between 139th Avenue and 140th Avenue. Um, although it's in the current area structure plan, engineering has concerns with that because that connects up to a county area where there's potentially uh, five to six quarter sections of uh, additional development that would be connected to that area. The city typically connects our uh, neighborhoods to the arterial roadways and not internally. And so without that assessment being done, we we don't know what the impact to that road is. And having uh, just recently completed the 108th Street or 102nd Street traffic study, the draft, which was posted uh, about a month ago, we want to make sure before that road is included and constructed that it's properly analyzed. Thanks, Mr. Kyle. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, Dan, uh, usually uh, we get some uh, uh, description in the report relative to any feedback received. I didn't note any uh, any comment there relative to the feedback received from the advertising, letter sending, etc. Uh, through the mayor, we did not receive any any comments uh, or concerns as a result of it, uh, as a result of any of the advertising. Um, the only the only real comment, I guess, that the city did receive was from the county. Uh, basically, they indicated their uh, uh, support for a connection from between this area and the uh, area to the north, and indicated uh, essentially that yeah that they, I guess, they required a connection, and uh, and that they would uh, initiate the appeal process available under under Section 690 of the Act if it was not provided. for administration at this point we'll have another opportunity uh, towards the end uh, so we'll open the presentation submission portion of the public hearing uh, and first we'll ask anyone uh, who'd like to speak in support of the application to come forward anybody to come forward to speak uh, in support of the application come on to the front and introduce yourself Paul. thank you mr. mayor and counselors uh, I'm Scott Rossler with helix engineering uh, been hired on as part of the Trader Ridge project on behalf of uh, Trader Properties. Uh, I have them with me as well. Uh, so I'm Sam Osman with um, with Trader Properties, uh, Jeff McCammon with uh, Cushman Wakefield, and Doug Bauer with Cushman Wakefield. So I think what I'll do to maybe make this simple is I'll, I'll just kind of run through our assessment here, and then I'll hit all the questions that Dan wasn't able to answer. So. Um, so the, the Trader Ridge development, I mean, and Dan's done a very good job of explaining the location, uh, the existing uses as far as agriculture, 
Uh, everyone's aware of the farm implement dealership that's at the north end of 102nd Street. Uh, there is also a high-pressure gas line that runs along the east side of 102nd uh, throughout the extents of the plan. So I actually might get your eye in the sky on so that I can point some things out. Um, For now, so the this land, as Dan stated, has uh, slopes pretty significantly from the northeast to the southwest corner of the site. Uh, the area in green is where we have proposed for our uh, stormwater management facility. Uh, that is, there's also a drainage channel in the northeast corner. Uh, I'll flip to your existing plan. You've probably seen that. There's a, a small channel that runs through the northeast corner of the quarter section um, that drains into the Arbor Hills Ravine, which is connected to the ponds at 108th Street and 132nd. So the the intention with the, with this plan is to obviously accommodate a commercial industrial development, um, predominantly commercial, so it's 51 hectares or so of, uh, of commercial land, uh, zoned with C commercial arterial and also commercial general commercial. The the stormwater management in the southwest corner of the quarter will handle any retention matters that we have. Um, there's all, and as Dan stated, there is a deferred reserve caveat of 5.02 hectares, which uh, through some discussions with administration, uh, we've determined that that would be best dealt with through cash and lieu. Um, we have a pretty significant trail network and whatnot for the residential neighborhood to the west. So it's, and, and that we've tried to maintain that to allow some pedestrian connectivity. This is, this is in all likelihood, we'll have some, um, a large amount of retail kind of in the southeast corner. So at the intersection of 100th and 132nd Ave. Uh, and, and there's probably going to be a, a fairly strong contingent of, of retail along 132nd as well. So our expectation is that uh, the neighborhoods that are adjacent to this development will use this commercial quite, uh, often so the transportation network and I will get into this a little bit uh, more detailed as we kind of go on here but transportation network essentially has uh, uh, as stated earlier we've got 100th street on the east bounding the east side of the uh, property and 132nd Ave on the south so a uh, fairly major I think what is still considered a highway um, and an arterial on the south so the the collector network that's proposed is fairly simple, fairly good, like um, going to provide good land uses. Uh, and I, at this point, the intention is not to chop it up very much. So, um, you know, very large lots and, and whatnot. So the, there will, the brown lines, uh, I know you can see that plan when uh, we were doing a presentation, but so that is the proposed uh, trail network. So the uh, connectivity from the Arbor Hills neighborhood also from the Northridge neighborhood for the residences there uh, would give them uh, pedestrian access to all of the businesses on located throughout the plan area. So, um, all of the roads within the trade areas development would be collectors. There's, uh, they're, they're fairly, uh, there's, there's not many of them. So the intention is that they're going to carry quite a bit of traffic. Um, the TIA that has been done to date, it's, it has been completed and it conforms to the recently completed 132nd half functional study. The reason that that's been brought up today is basically because of this connection to 140th Ave. So when we originally started this plan, that was not anticipated. So the effect of that connection is somewhat unknown right now. So I'm going to propose a, an, a, an amendment to the text a little bit later on that, that would kind of cover that off so that we're able to, to do a TIA and, and address that as we move forward. So um, the, the intersections are, uh, as stated earlier, 139th Ave and 100th Street. Uh, has an all directional access, um, full expectation that that's, that has traffic signals. Um, there's a right in, right out uh, proposed at the midpoint between 139th and 132nd. So that would be here. That would be in off of uh, off of 100th Street. We have another a right. I believe there was a right in, right out. There might be an arrow drop here, but the uh, for sure a right out of of the retail space uh, that potentially would be in the current vacant lot 
that would be directly across from Northgate at Honda. And we have uh, an all-directional access at 102nd Street. Uh, there was an amendment that came forward not that long ago, but at the start of our process for this outline plan, um, which showed that as we revised that to an all-directional rather than a right-in, right-out. And a right-in, right-out also at 103rd Street and 132nd Avenue. So fairly good access to the plan area. There's also a collector connection to the Arbor Hills neighborhood, which runs to a collector that has direct access to 108th Street. Um, so the only direction that currently we were a little bit unknown on is, is the connection to 140th. So the, the water servicing, uh, I'll rip through water and sanitary. It's uh, fairly straightforward. We got a water connection, water line that runs on, on the south side of 140th Avenue, the north end of the property. So along here, the it has more than ample fire flows to handle commercial, industrial, whatever type of development we want. Um, so that's been assessed, and, and fire flows are more than adequate for the development. So we've got a second connection, well, actually three connections. A second connection at 102nd Street on a water line that was extended up there with the Northridge development, and a third connection along 133rd, I believe it is, uh, into the Arbor Hills neighborhood. So, and a, another one at 139th going into Arbor. So that would be a, a future connection. Knows that development's not to that point yet. So <clears throat> the sanitary servicing current um, current plans originally plans had uh, a connection on 102nd Street uh, through discussions with Aquaterra been uh, noted to us that they don't feel that, that that line has enough capacity to handle this development so uh, we have rerouted basically the entire development to a 375 millimeter diameter uh, trunk sewer that is extended to within a few hundred meters of the of 132nd Avenue in the Northridge development so um, a little bit of ongoing talks with Aquaterra there to try to, to uh, accommodate some flows at least through 102nd, but at this stage, uh, the intention is to push all of it through the Northridge development and a, uh, a trunk main that exists there. So, both the sanitary and water design reports are completed and approved by Aquaterra, uh, so we have no concerns with that. Uh, the stormwater management plan, um, being that this is a commercial uh, type development, the runoff coming from it is a little more significant than your traditional residential neighborhood so the, the natural drainage course that was in the northwest corner of the quarter section um, was was looked at I guess from a, the perspective of, of whether we could keep it we talked to Alberta Environment about uh, about that drainage course and what we would ultimately do with it so the long-term uh, direction on that was to take it west along 140th Ave and drain it south to our pond so to capture most of the water there Alberta Environment does have some concerns with uh, with potentially diverting all of the water from that into a retention facility. Just with the ravine that runs through Arbor Hills, they wanted us to retain some flows through that to maintain all the vegetation and whatnot. So, um, so we'll likely leave a lot of that flow to go that direction. Uh, the remainder of our of our um, assessment focused on getting everything to the pond. So being, <coughs> excuse me, the um, the arrows show the, the overland flow pass. So everything will dump into a pond in the southwest corner. Um, we've been asked several times why the pond's there and not here. Uh, rationale is just that this is high profile, high visibility land and we were able to push it back a little bit and, and um, you know, put it next to the residences rather than next to another commercial site. So, um, so the, this now we've got neighborhoods in Arbor Hills which back onto the pond, it'll be a little bit more of an amenity for them as well. So, um, <clears throat> so those flows would come into the pond and be released at pre-development rates uh, to a storm sewer that was installed this year with the Arbor Hills development. So, uh, so everything functionally there. Storm, <clears throat> the stormwater management plan design report was has also been approved with the City of Grand Prairie and Engineering Services. So uh, essentially, we are good to go there as well. Uh, shallow utilities, uh, same as every development, they will be extended to the property by um, individual franchise holders. So the natural gas, natural coal, electric, skeletons, sink will be requested at the time of service. Um, 
phasing of the development. So our initial plan and, and you know, is to do this in a single phase. Uh, that obviously is, is every development is somewhat economically driven. So um, depending on conditions of the economy, we would uh, expect one, two phases, three potentially. But um, but the expectation is that this is there's a fairly high demand on it. So the a lot of interest in the property already and uh, obviously it's in a spectacular location so uh, we anticipate that it's probably not going to take that long to build out so the uh, the expectations of the developers are going to do that as quickly as possible so um, so I'll hit the questions here first but what I, I just wanted to explain before we move on is the um, on the transportation so we're going to propose an amendment only to the text, but essentially, <clears throat> through the discussions that we had with the county, this 140th Ave connection, um, there's kind of a lot going on in this corner. So the, uh, to get the 139th Ave connection, Alberta Transportation wants 140th closed. So now when we close 140th, the county wants an alternate route for their traffic. So to, to put our first access in, we need to close this access. The county wants connection to 140th uh, to make to make their 140th have uh, rerouted a little bit more efficiently than what they have today so the trying to accommodate everyone here was really difficult <laughs> so the uh, what well, we've we looked at a lot of different locations and essentially uh, and we've had several discussions with the county they're quite happy with any any connection between 103rd street and so what we're going to propose, and I'm going to read the amendment right now, just so that uh, everyone has a, an idea of, of what it is. Um, and then I'll probably answer some questions and, and I'll hit the, the rest of the questions as well. And then if, if that works, I can come back to the amendment at the end again. So, so the amendment that we were going to propose is rather than, than lock that location down on 140th, um, is there's in paragraph 3.1, the fifth paragraph of transportation network, uh, we were going to rewrite the paragraph to, to say such. As a result of the closure of 140th Avenue, a road connection between 139th and 140th Avenue is also proposed. The alignment of this connection uh, may be located between 103rd Street and 101st Street. The location shall be determined through a TIA at the time of subdivision application without further amendment to this document. So the intention there is to is to allow basically us to complete a TIA with that um, with that alignment moved to wherever that TIA tells us to put it. So, if you know if, if we're better off to have that location on 103rd Street, we would put it there. Um, you know, to, to be honest, to the developer, this really makes little difference. Um, the preferential for us is is to remove it from this location. This is this is a pretty prime lot and highway frontage and the idea would, to not carve it in half is is uh, significantly better for us so um, but obviously we, we were uh, cognizant of the, uh, the traffic issues and the concerns on 102nd street so the intention is to complete a TIA and wherever that road lands within here um, that's where we'll place it so the uh, because that's not complete City's still administration is still working on the 102nd Street TA, so or uh, functional. So once that's uh, uh, completed, it's a pretty easy tweak to, to figure out what's going to happen when we connect the, uh, the county lines. So I'll come back to that in a minute and with any questions on that. Um, as Just, far, Mr. Rossler, do you have that? Uh, have you handed that the text of that amendment to administration? Do you have a copy of it? The, no, I can get that for you. Though. Okay, <laughs> for you. Okay. Um, so the you, on the TIA, like I said, it, it does conform to everything that's in place today. We're really just talking about that connection to 140. So um, the as far as the stormwater ponds go, uh, I believe it was Councilor McLean asked about that. The we did actually look at putting soccer pitches in the bottom of this pond. Is it, it is a dry pond? Um, it does drain to Future Harbor Hills Pond, so the quality that we wanted out of it the through the city's design manuals and standards there 
any landscaping around the storm pond, we've got specific requirements that we've got to do there. So around the storm pond, there's going to be trees and, and uh, rates identified in the, in the uh, construction and, and design manuals. Uh, there will also be some benches and dog dispensers and things like that along the trails and whatnot. So, um, so that side of it, the leisure side of it, uh, we did look at soccer pitches, but it was uh, we actually have drawings showing a couple down there. But the uh, the direction that we got at the end was it wasn't really going to work for the parks department. So we vetted that with them, and they were they were happier to put uh, money into something else and, and do that rather than. So this is it's it's actually designated as a PUL, so it's it's not municipal reserve. So they didn't feel that that was the place to put it. So, um, but we did have that discussion, and we were you know, willing to kind of review it. So. Um, I guess if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Any more questions for our presenter? I see a couple in the queue. Councillor Rice. The amendment uh, to the road, where would that go? Would it go in the area structure plan or the outline plan? Where would it go? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Rice. The, uh, the amendment would be in the outline plan. So the, the section 3.1, paragraph 5 of the outline plan. Uh, I did review the area structure plan to see if there was anything in there that would uh, require amendment, and and basically it it just identifies a connection and says that the outline plan. So the area right. structure plan is fine. It would be the outline plan that needs to be amended. Thank you, Councilor McLean. Thanks, Scott. I heard about this before as well, with uh, inside that area for water in case there's a big runoff or whatever. Um, you're saying it could be under review because it's like we're going to be right beside homes, uh, houses there, and it's just going to become nothing, blah. And this area, if you look directly across to the east, Petra Canada and Humpties are number one for their retail. So this area is going to be really, really good, and they know it. Business knows it. I would like to see a, a detailed outline plan of a recreation area for workers in that area, for the businesses, and for people in residential who live. There's going to be a trail, but they can look awfully blah. You don't do too much to it. You're telling me a couple picnic tables. Where's a plan? Something that would show us more than what I'm hearing. Because we've seen a lot of developments happen and nothing doesn't look good at all. So the... Do you have anything on paper? Not with me. The... The Arbor Hills development, which is directly adjacent to this, um, might have a little bit of an aerial on it. But... So this is the, the Arbor Hills area structure plan, so it's not the, the outline plan that I was going to show you, but the this ravine that was that is constructed is kind of the central feature for the whole neighborhood so our intention is to draw everybody into that space there's all of the park space within arbor hills so we i think i believe this year we dedicated uh, about 80 percent of the of the municipal reserve that was for that entire development so um you know up in the range of, of uh, 10 acres of that was dedicated and is being constructed as we speak. Um, I know no one's been down there for a while because roads are closed, but the this has been retained as a natural feature. So that's actually there's actually about uh, five, four or five hectares of environmental reserve there, uh, and a, a two kilometer long trail system with three parks adjacent to it. Um, that so as far as recreational uses, that's the uh, that's where we're trying to focus everyone. The pond that we're putting. Uh, directly beside this is connected to that so the uh, that feature well, it will obviously will have a trail system around it um, <clears throat> and the intention is to is a draw on that the, the pond that we are constructing has um, it's it's not a, a dry barren pond so it, it has some channels in it it'll have bulrushes and, and uh, some vegetation growth and things like that um, it'll be a little more walkable than, than a wet pond obviously um, but the you know we vetted that with Parks Department to make sure the maintenance and everything was working, but the intention is to, to utilize kind of that that core regional perspective that the that Parks Department is trying to achieve. So uh, that helps. <laughs> See, uh, Councillor Thiessen. 
Thank you, Mayor Bill. Uh, hi, Scott. Um, I kind of want to go back to the Environment Canada thing. I still want to talk about that storm pond. Um, you said that Environment Canada had some issues, and looking over the drainage, that can, I think it's been made mention, you mentioned it yourself, everything's going to one spot. Uh, could you elaborate on Environment Canada's position on everything going to one spot and the potential maybe runoff into the residentials? Yeah, so under Alberta Environment Standards and Regulations, we're required to store any uh, any water and, and uh, capacities within some type of a retention facility uh, that in, in one location uh, on land and outlet at our pre-development flow rate. So uh, the pre-development flow rate in Grand Prairie for this area is five liters per second. So essentially what they say, that's the amount of water that would come off of that field. Uh, and we try to put the ponds in the discharge at the exact same location that it was going naturally before. So that was why uh, when we talk about that, that natural drainage course, we want to keep some water going through there because that's what's keeping that ravine alive right now. So, so we, we've done that and, and they're quite happy with that. Um, there's a few different, we do have to protect the, the neighborhood. I mean, we're, we're turning what today is, is a field into uh, mostly parking lots. So the, the intention, obviously, is that we have to keep uh, all the water that a lot soaks in in, in topsoil and, and uh, natural vegetation. So all the runoff that comes off now has to be stored somewhere. So we put that within our stormwater facility. Um, this one actually has, and then we've got a freeboard as well. So we store everything up to a hundred year flood. So essentially, the, the biggest in a hundred years. Um, and and we, we've taken and. Well, it might be 0.9, I can't remember the exact number on top of it, but it almost doubles the capacity. So we've taken, essentially, we can, in, within that facility, we can store a 100-year storm plus another 100% of that volume. And if we get something even bigger than that, uh, we always make sure that the, that the over, we call them the overland flow paths. So when that pond does overflow, because it will at some point, uh, and when it does, it's not going into a house. It's going to go down a street, and this one happens to go down the 150 arterials to 132nd Ave and west to the Grand Prairie. So, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the focuses when we do storm uh, storm ponds. That's the first thing we look at is is making sure that we're not bringing in any bad crop or dust. Well, thank you. I have one more question, if I may, Mayor Bill, uh, and. Uh, so thank you for uh, for uh, showing your foresight and planning on that one. Uh, I just uh, kind of want a crystal ball answer. Um, when we're talking transportation, um, we're talking transit, we're talking high traffic density. Um, are you thinking like around 102nd Street, potentially 103rd, 139, um, maybe 140? Are we doubling up the size of that road? Are we like two lanes in a transit lane? Or are we just two lanes, like one of them being a turnoff lane, like into the commercial centers? Or are we just talking single lane, like opposing traffic, traffic coming this way, traffic going that way? Uh, most of this development will be, I mean, obviously with the size of the parcels, there's going to be a, quite a lot of internal road networks. So um, same as kind of what you would see in Future Shop Best Buy, some roads that aren't necessarily on the city's maps. <laughs> so um, there'll be a lot of that. But the main, the main roads will have, uh, they'll be constructed to the city's commercial and industrial. Uh, most of them, they, uh, they're all single lane, but they accommodate parking, which gives them room to have turn lanes and whatnot at, at different intersections. Um, that's something that we, we do get into a little bit more in detailed design. So if there's a, if there's a particular intersection that's, that needs a dedicated left turn bay, then we'll make that change. Um, but with this one, it's nice that it's a, a big development. It's probably going to all go relatively quickly and move forward together. So. I would expect additional lanes on this road and building up to 100 Street, uh, but that's all part of our, our detailed design. When we, get the, when we get the TIA completed, we know the traffic volumes, we know how many lanes we can bring in and how many lanes we can take out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Yoon. Uh, just gonna say, it was good to ask that 1 in 100 storm. Well, there's some areas in the city where it's built for a 1 in 100 year storm, and we've had a uh, Last four or five years, how the weather's changed and it's filled in flood basements. So, I see you're really planning ahead. Um, 
is it two different developers between this Trainer Ridge and uh, Arbor Hills? The two different developers. Am I exactly right? Okay. I still don't think the planning of seeing it in front of me should have come tonight for around that, for what areas and business could do, because this is going to be a very good area, and I think it was very lacking. I like the park. Uh, connectivity, you're going to have trails and bring it to another developer's area, that's nice but what about within this development and I find it very lacking and I, that you never brought nothing detailed in that So, Council Flynn, is there a question in there? Well, the question is, where is it? There's nothing here right now in front of us Where is it? Okay. It's, so, it's lacking I, I'm going uh, to say that that's not actually a question that's that good. to answer and <laughs> save that for debate for later on um, Are there any other questions for the delegation? See anybody else ringing in? So, Mr. Rossler, thanks very much for presenting tonight. Did you want me to provide the wording to uh, administration? Yeah, if you could uh, provide it to the legislative services manager, uh, and then we've got that. So, uh, if council chooses to consider that, we could say as amended, and administration has that. Uh, so, this is still the uh, presentation submission portion of the public hearing. Is there anybody else that'd like to come forward uh, to speak in support of the applicant? else would like to come forward to speak in support of the application gentlemen you're all on the same team there is that what I got earlier from the introductions okay uh, then uh, is there anybody that'd like to come forward and to speak in opposition I'll ask again if there's anybody that'd like to speak in opposition to the proposed changes and I don't see anybody else in our gallery uh, so I'll ask one final time for council if there are any questions of administration before I close the public hearing councillor Redburn Thank you, Mayor Gavin. Uh, question for administration. Does the amendment work as far as you're concerned? Mr. Welton. Um, to the Mayor, we don't have any uh, concerns about the proposed amendment. Thank you. So I don't see anybody else in the queue with questions for administration, so I'll close the public hearing. Uh, we move on to business arising, and Councillor Rice. Move second reading of bylaw C-1212C, an amendment to the Arbor Hills Area Structure Plan. Very much, Councillor Rice. And just to clarify, what did we hear before that the amendment was for the outline? Outline plan. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Rice. So, discussion debate on second reading of the area structure plan amendment. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Rice. I move third reading of bylaw C twelve twelve C an amendment to the Arbor Hills Area Structure Plan. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice, did you want to continue on? Sure. I'll move second reading of bylaw C one three zero seven as amended being a bylaw to adopt the Trader Ridge Outline Plan. Thank you very much, Councillor Rice. So that's the uh, uh, text amendment that was proposed to allow for the TIA and the placement of that connection to 140th Avenue, uh, anywhere between 103rd Street and 101st Street. Correctly? Okay. Uh, any discussion or debate on that motion for second reading as amended? Okay, seeing nobody ring. Sorry. I move third reading of bylaw C-1307 as amended, being a bylaw to adopt the Trader Ridge Outline Plan. Thank you, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Seeing none, call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move second reading of bylaw C-1260-16, an amendment to the land use bylaw. Mr. Rice, any discussion or debate on this land use bylaw amendment? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Thank you. And I move third reading for bylaw C1260-16, an amendment to the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Seeing none. I believe that handles all of our business for that public hearing. Uh, and um, we'd move on in 
our agenda. We had no items of unfinished business. Uh, we did have two reports, though, this evening, and the first is the strategic priorities, port, re, strategic priorities chart from October to December 2014, and we'll look to our city manager for an introduction. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, the strategic priorities chart from City Council deals with a number of areas. Uh, look at council priorities, advocacy priorities, and corporate strategies. Um, every, uh, I guess it would be uh, four times a year, City Council reviews their strategic priorities chart, and uh, upon review, they bring forth uh, an updated uh, chart with uh, new milestones and new targets that have been, and any other changes that they may wish to do with the Priorities chart. The, uh, in this particular version, there's been a couple of uh, additions: the uh, Recreation Master Plan and the RSMP Strategic Plan. Uh, and I, guess, I suppose the other big change to the Strategic Priorities chart is who the lead staff person is on a number of the issues. Um, our <laughs> Jane is sticking out her tongue. The uh, Community Growth Director, who is uh, in charge of a lot of the items, is uh, has announced her retirement. And so the acting director will be Jane Cato Sharp, and so we have, we'll have a new name there for leading those projects. Thanks very much for that introduction, Mr. City Manager. Well, of course, uh, council members saw this as we revised the chart, uh, but we look for a motion to adopt it and make it formal. Uh, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Governor. I move that council approve the strategic priorities chart for the term October to December 2014. And welcome, Jane. <laughs> to be on the list many times. <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor Reverend. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Thank you, Mayor Bill. Um, I just have a question uh, for administration. Um, uh, we went over this plan. Uh, we've got mile it, our milestones and stuff that we've set up. So it's a great document. My only question is, uh, I'm looking at the document that we had uh, last week, and it had us targeted for surface and subsurface evaluation for downtown enhancement plan uh, to come back sometime this next week. Um, but I don't see that in here, and actually the targets changed, and I made a lot of changes to the page, but it says that December and project design scope. So I'm just wondering, um, just because it's important, uh, it's important for our budget if we're, that we get uh, that subsurface and surface evaluation so we know where we're gonna direct our funds. Uh, are we still gonna be able to get that back in time for our budget deliberations? So, Councillor Thiessen, which, uh, sorry, are you looking under corporate strategies or downtown enhancement plan? No, I'm looking at corporate strategies. I'm looking at... Uh, priorities up top. Yeah, I'm looking at this sheet from our last workshop, and then I'm looking at the one here, and it's, we got target December and project design scope. But on the downtown enhancement plan, it says surface and subsurface evaluation target September. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, because I know we reviewed where we were going with that, and I know that there's a lot of discussion about when are we going to get that subsurface and surface evaluation. And I'm just uh, wondering why it's not on here now. And we should have that, I think, if we're going to redesign our downtown. Off the link. No, I, I think, uh, Councillor Thiessen, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, administration what administration has those numbers. What Council was looking for was some sort of cost estimate before mm -hmm. going into budget to understand exactly the scope of and uh, cost implications of what we have underground right now. Um, and I believe uh, that was discussed at the workshop that we held in March, uh, earlier. So, uh, <coughs> Mr. City Manager. Um, Christine the Donnelly, the uh, Engineering Services Manager, will be presenting some of those items at the capital budget. Okay. The downtown enhancement, so that will be at budget time. Okay. Yeah, just, sorry, thanks just for my own clarification. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Thiessen. Any other discussion or debate on the strategic priorities chart? <coughs> Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Uh, we had another report, and I think we'll look for an introduction from the administration from Mr. Welton. 8.2, Land Use Bylaw Amendment C-1260-19, uh, add government service to the CA district. Mr. Welton. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the city has received an application to amend the land use bylaw to add government service as a permitted use to the CA district. Uh, the Municipal Government Act requires that we hold a public hearing prior to giving second reading, uh, and uh, advertising of that uh, will be... Uh, undertaken in accordance with the requirement of the Act. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Welton. Any, um, sorry, so I'd look for a motion for first reading. 
So Rice? I move second reading of my... First reading, I'm sorry, first reading of Bylaw C-1260-19, Amendment to the Land Use Bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. A motion for first reading is not open for discussion. Please call the vote. Okay. I would move that Monday, November 3rd, 2014, at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers be established as the date, time, and location for the public hearing. So rights. Any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location for that public hearing? I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well. I think that handles all of our reports items and would take us into committee business. We'd start with 9.1, the Arts Development Committee. And Councillor Thiessen, did you handle that meeting? Um, thank you, Mayor Bill. Uh, just, uh, I, I'd like to move. That uh, council approved the minutes uh, for the Arts Development Committee meeting held Friday, September 19th, 2014, uh, with an amendment, though. I just noticed going over our notes here that uh, the minutes were there. One of the festival, uh, I guess, uh, people who had applied for grant funding, it says here that uh, they applied in the amount of $2,000. They actually applied in the amount of $5,000. So the numbers look skew when they asked for two, and we gave them more than double that. So, yeah. <laughs> So good catch. That's why we read the minutes, and uh, we'll make sure that we get them that amendment made. So a motion to approve the amendment, the minutes as amended. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councilor Thiessen, did you want to speak to the, the minutes at all? Sure. There's just a couple things that we touched on. We did have some funding to to give out to different community groups. Over the uh, over the rest of the year, we had about five thousand dollars left, and we had uh, two applicants come forward. Uh, one was the GP Singers Festival of Carols, and they asked for a, a nominal uh, donation of four hundred and fifty dollars, so which we were easily accepted. And then the other one was the Grand Prairie District Music Festival Association, uh, and they're having their music festival here uh, next spring, April thirteenth to May third. Typically, they're a very uh, self-sustainable group, but uh, after 10 to 15 years of doing it on their own, they needed to catch up on some stuff, so they applied. And we said, no problem, because we like what you're doing. So we spent all our money. We're currently bankrupt till the next budget. Um, and uh, then the other thing was is that uh, we just uh, were keeping the rest of our committee members uh, aware of uh, where our festival funding was going as far as being pushed forward to budget cycle and that there would be new opportunity in the next round of granting. You go away once, Rory, and they blow your whole money. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, we move on to 9.2, the Council Committee of the Whole. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary. Can I move Council to receive the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole meeting held September 19, 2014? Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, did everyone have a chance to read that set of minutes? Any discussion? Councillor Radburn? Thank you, Mary. Uh, just a comment. This is actually just a... Uh, uh, where we reviewed the uh, RCMP strategic plan, and actually we took that to uh, to council last time and uh, approved the plan. But this is a catch up with the minutes. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. Okay, that motion carries, uh, and would take us to nine point three, the Community Growth Committee from September. Third, Councillor O'Toole, was that your committee? Yes, it is, Mayor Given, and if I could, uh, I move the council receive the minutes of the Community Growth Committee held on uh, September 23rd, 2014. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Councillor O'Toole. I got one item, sir. Uh, I move the council support an application to the Alberta Community Partnership Grant for the Wapiti River Management Plan and the MDA Greenview Act as the managing partner of the grant funding should the application be successful. And in speaking to this, uh, the Wapiti River Management Plan Steering Committee has determined the scope of the plan and is seeking funding for the socioeconomic and landscape commutative effects assessment components boy there's a lot of words there 
at a cost of approximately $1 million. Uh, correspondence has been received requesting the city participate in the regional collaboration grant to fund the social, economic, and community consultation component of the Wapiti River Management Fund. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole, anything else you wanted to highlight in that set of minutes? Uh, no, I don't, sir. Move on to 9.4, Community Living and Councillor Tarrant. Thank you, Mary Gavin. I just had uh, one question uh, for the minutes there. I see that the um, community garden and edible landscaping policy was passed. And I'm uh, just wondering why it hasn't wasn't coming to council tonight, or do we expect that in the future? Where, where is the, what's the status of that? Uh, we'll look to our legislative service manager, Ms. Williams. Um, Mayor Bill, that uh, will be coming to the next council meeting. There was a, a few adjustments we wanted to make to it before it came. So it was just um, administrative administrative things, you know, grammar, whatever. So yeah, makes sense. Thank yep. you. That's great. Thanks very much, um, Councillor Redburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that uh, council receive the minutes of the community living committee meeting held September twenty third, two thousand fourteen. Thanks very much, Councilor Redburn. Any discussion debate on that set of minutes? Anything in the place that we'd like to correct before we adopt them? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Redburn, anything you want to highlight in that set of minutes? Yeah, uh, three things actually, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks a lot. Uh, we did receive a delegation from Grand Prairie Live Theatre. Uh, their ask uh, at the end of the presentation. They shared a uh, public meeting that had been held, but the, the ask was a, that a commission, that uh, Council Commission of Feasibility Study regarding a regional performing arts multimedia center. Uh, we've asked them in to bring a report back with the estimated costs. Uh, actually, that uh, report is coming to committee tomorrow. Um, Jubilee Park Enhancement Plan, we referred to uh, two budget deliberations, a three-year phase-in of, an, of an enhancement plan for uh, Jubilee Park. As you'll note in the in the in the motion, and finally, uh, uh, Councillor Clayton brought uh, forward a discussion regarding uh, uh, short-term and long-term uh, plans for the Bear Creek Pool, and so we've asked him to report back. Um, the uh, motion reads: Direct administration bring back a report in January 2015 outlining a process of exploring alternate uses of the Bear Creek facility and the potential for future and interim uses. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. I see you may have a question here. Councillor Rice. Um, Jubilee Park. I think the lighting in there originally was fueled by natural gas, uh, which means there wouldn't be any underground electrical. But I think we, we know that in order for a park to be successful, it needs adequate lighting. And I, I wonder if your estimates include putting underground wiring in so we can, there was an experiment that didn't appear to work, in my opinion, and I could be proven wrong. Turn your own microphone on there, please. <clears throat> Gary may help with this, actually, but it may be somewhat counterintuitive, but uh, I think Parks were saying that uh, there's some money for lighting, and uh, really uh, too much lighting uh, brings too much other stuff to a park. So this was a, a balance of uh, some, some improved lighting. But not bringing it to, to a point where uh, uh, lots of other things happen. Thanks, Rice. Uh, like if you're looking for, there, there certainly was a consideration of lighting as one of the more significant costs, if I remember correctly. Um, other questions or comments, uh, Councillor McLean? Thank you, Mary Given. Uh, Kind of going on the back of Councillor Rice's question, uh, I don't believe maybe anything has to be underground. It could be solar. We are there in technology, and uh, we can get after it and start doing it. I think administration is looking at solar. It's been brought up quite a bit by a few councillors the last few years. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, if I recall from that discussion, uh, some of that light of was decorative lighting, and uh, that's why the price was quite a bit less. 
it wasn't uh, safety lighting. So. Okay. Uh, looks like that's all the questions so far. Um, we'll move on to 9.5, Community Safety Committee from September 30th. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move the council to receive the minutes of Community Safety Committee meeting held September 30th, 2014. Discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing nothing, I will call the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor McLean, you had one motion arising. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move with Council Award Tender T 58 564 14, Bulk Highway Salt to NSC Minerals Limited in the amount of $314,748, excluding GST, is the lowest bidder meeting city specification, which I think it might have been the only bidder. Thank you very much, Councilor McLean. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Because it was safe streets, so we buy some salt. <laughs> Deer like it. Okay. Uh, seeing nobody ringing, and then I'll call for the vote. Carries. Councilor McLean, anything else you wanted to add? Just, just a couple things. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. There was one, uh, Robert Carroll, head of transportation, came by and was brought a pamphlet for council to look at at the committee meeting. Some adjustments made, some good uh, advice from council. One was, you know, advertise on the map layout that most likely every two weeks, the day before collection of Aquaterra for landfill garbage would be maybe possibly you'll be in there cleaning the, the streets in the residential area. So there was some very good comments made on that. So because a lot of people say we'll believe it when we see it. And I think they are going to see it this year. It's going to be a very good uh, new policy. So that was important since we are right around the corner of some below zero weathers coming up. And another one that was brought up was about DMS. Um, the fire department going when ambulances weren't ready and what was happening. I think a report's still coming back to council in six to eight weeks. But a lot of us know that there was a peak ambulance that was taken out of stream and it sounds like it's back in stream and but they're still going to bring a report to us to tell us how uh you know within the city boundaries and, and surrounding areas how it affected individuals uh for response times and so <clears throat> excuse me i look forward to that report in six to eight weeks thank you <laughs> <laughs> councillor mclean's very passionate about ambulances <laughs> choked up a little bit there towards the end <laughs> Okay, thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Uh, we'll move to 9.6, the Corporate Services Committee meeting. Councillor Logan. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee in September. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Logan. Any other discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Councillor Radford, did you notice something? I just noticed that uh, the report included uh, the cost estimates, and I didn't see anything in the minutes. Um, I believe it was $2.5 million. Each year for center. two years, yeah, on the service center, uh, referral to budget. Okay, so uh, Mr. Anderson, you said it was five million total. Was there some report on that? Or estimate? Yes, that's the estimated cost, five million dollars over two years. Okay, so that number will be at the budget meeting. Okay, um, if there's no other discussion on the minutes, then I'll call for the vote. Carries. Councillor Logan, did you want to highlight anything from that? Was there something else? One. That uh, Lauren just uh, mentioned on that we spent a fair amount of time going over the uh, uh, proposed uh, renovations to the service centre and a number of other adjustments that are going to be required to uh, uh, that whole establishment in terms of the need to satisfy the growth that we've had in the community. Uh, so there's no action that comes forward from that particular meeting, but you'll see it on future agendas. Thanks, Councillor Logan. Um, I think that handles all of our committee business. Uh, we had no items of correspondence. We had no delegations this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, and no notices of motion. So that takes us right to council member uh, reports from our agencies, boards, and commissions. And we'll start with uh, Nighthawk, uh, Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Just a quick update. Uh, this past Saturday, the Nighthawk uh, Recreation um, 
place the facility rather had a their 18th annual comedy night it was held at uh, five mile hall they had a packed house and uh, although i don't have any numbers to report uh, for them all uh, that i can see it was a huge success and i'll uh, report next time in regards to how much they raised so thank you it was a uh, it was a great success thanks very much councillor clayton Mr. O'Toole, staying on the same side of the room, you had a report on Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum? Yes, Mayor Given. Uh, we had a meeting here last week. Uh, we had actually two meetings. One was a building committee meeting, and I'm pretty happy to say that uh, our last official meeting will be the 30th of this month. Uh, with that, the building will be pretty much uh, enclosed. There will be some light... Uh, uh, would you maybe put it operational things that need to be in place and by the, about the 15th of November uh, our staff uh, paleontologists will be moving in and that sort of thing so looking good there and as for the uh, operating of the society we had a meeting just to meet all the new uh, people that were on the new board and uh, had a few things to discuss regarding uh, uh, guidelines and stuff like that but uh, we're in good shape. We're ready to go. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Council Member Roundtable, and we'll start with Councillor McLean first, and we'll go to my uh, counterclock or sorry, clockwise. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, September 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, I was in Edmonton at AUMA conference, and just once again, Councillor Rice, thank you, President of AUMA, for uh, doing such a fabulous job, and she really did. Uh, if, you know, as I've been there a few times now with, I think, the three different presidents since I've only been uh, council second term, uh, I'm, I'm glad that Councillor Rice is president there and there's a lot of momentum happening and how it might happen down the road. There's been some resolutions passed and one was done with Coal Lake and about regionalization and looking at different things and I'm very proud to say I was at, at this AUMA and with uh, fellow councillors and the mayor given. Uh, September 28th, I was at also me and my family as Tiny Hands of Hope in Mississippi Park. Um, it's more than doubled in size um, for this event. And this is the second year. So we all have uh, relatives or family or friends that uh, youth are go too soon. And so this event is very big since we're the youngest city in Canada. Chances are something like this, a lot of people are affected. So they did a tremendous job and hats off to this event and many more years. And then also on September 30th, we had a, you can say, a dinner date with the Downtown Association um, about media concerns, sidewalk, which seems to be every year about the blocks, and some are uneven, some are perfect, and uh, about the future. As you know, of our downtown uh, development plan down the road is coming to the budget and underground services, and some of them that I found uh, was clay, clay pipes from seven years ago. So if there's one area, Grand Prairie is pretty new, but our downtown... Some of it isn't. That's everything. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Uh, Councillor Logan. Thank you. Uh, that on. The uh, Councillor McLean uh, covered off uh, the one item I was going to speak to, and uh, with uh, AUMA and the fact that I didn't attend AUMA, I had a really light couple of weeks, the lightest since the last election. There's only one item that I want to uh, mention was... Uh, uh, this last Sunday, October 6, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, attending the Golden Age Center where the uh, uh, Regional Archives Society uh, puts on uh, a tea for uh, anybody that wants to come, but the, the most are uh, people that uh, access the uh, uh, Golden Age Center and had the pleasure of uh, speaking to them for a few minutes about my experiences in Africa. Now, Nobody hissed at me, so I think it went okay. Thank you. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Bill. Um, <clears throat> I, too, went to the AUMA, uh, uh, I guess, conference here in uh, Edmonton recently. But uh, before that, I'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, well, I guess it's kind of after it. Yeah, really, it's all after it. So let's just start with this. We can work way backwards. Uh, today, I took a tour with Councillors uh, O'Toole and Radburn down at the part, New Parts facility, and they showed us a uh, grand facility. It's got a ton of potential, a lot of space, 
And uh, they seem to got a really good plan to, to back it up as well so that they can uh, stay sustainable. So uh, it's really nice to get that tour. Uh, this past Saturday, I was with, uh, again, councillors Radburn and O'Toole and uh, Mr. Mayor himself at the Sisters in Spirit uh, walk uh, and uh, ceremony down at uh, Grand Prairie Regional College. On Tuesday the 30th, when I returned to Grand Prairie, I rushed over to uh, an information sharing dinner with the Downtown Association where we shared a lot of really good ideas, concerns, finding solutions together as a group. It was really productive and I was thankful that we could be there for that, especially myself. Now the AUMA. What a great event, I have to, I have to say. Like, uh, you know, the number of networking opportunities, the conversations that we had, the sessions were great. Uh, even the medias, uh, the temporary foreign workers. My dad called me up right after he saw the sleeve of one of my red suits. And <laughs> he said, I saw Helen Rice on TV and he was in Winnipeg. So uh, obviously like uh, through the AUMA conference and global television, uh, Helen Rice's face was plastered all across Western Canada, uh, supporting uh, all mid-sized and large cities in the province, especially for a temporary foreign worker program and uh, what is happening with that. So she was a strong advocate that way. Uh, we also had meetings with the ministers. We went to sessions on regionalization. Um, and I had great conversations, one in particular, I'm probably going to talk about it in the future, uh, a really good conversation that I had with the entire council of the, of the town of Devon, who is currently in the process of retrofitting an old uh, oil refinery grounds into a solar power plant to power their entire township on nothing but solar energy. So I want to keep those discussions open. I want to keep it open here, and I'd like to bring that forward uh, in future, but uh, yeah, it was probably the best conversation that I had with uh, anybody out there is with the whole council and uh, Yeah, that was about it. So oh, I, I have to say Before I go uh, the entire conference as I said was great But there was no more memorable moment than each and every single time this fair lady Helen Rice stood up to the mic uh, Not only was she congratulating people for spending money for supporting like women in politics, but she's also knocking down the old premier's competition by uh, you know heckling them right from the stage and I think she pulled probably about 50 or 60 laughs throughout the three days out of the crowd so probably I thought I was a good MC this this queen takes a cake so I'll pass it on to her now gotcha. Minister uh, Diana McQueen and Brad Pickering, the new deputy minister, that they have put the amendment of the Municipal Government Act up to num a number one priority of the Department of Municipal Affairs. So uh, that was that was fabulous. Also attended a meeting of the Alberta Recycling Management Authority. There are 470 municipal collection sites, and last year. Uh, 826,000 TVs and computers were recycled, uh, 2.3 million liters of paint, 421,000 spray cans, and 7 million tires. Uh, since uh, the program's inception in 1992, 86 million tires have been recycled. Uh, that's that's important to, to a municipal council because for every month you can extend the life of your landfill. Um, you can imagine what a what a nightmare it's going to be to build a new um, landfill. Of, first of all, the cost, but the, secondly, the siting of it because it's not in my backyard. Uh, so, uh, diversion from the landfill is is vitally important and. Uh, so when we're seeing numbers like this, it's really important to us. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, once again, uh, I attended the AUMA. A couple of the highlights over the four days that I was there uh, was a sit down with the council with K-Division. And there was a number of topics that were discussed and uh, their direction and what we would like to see direction. And sometimes we met and sometimes there was not so much meeting. Also, I had the ability to sit down with uh, Minister Klemchuk and uh, listen to her talk regarding FCSS funding. And it's, uh, it's a province-wide concern. And uh, there was numerous people 
asking her similar questions about uh, programs that had been cut. And uh, she said that she was looking into it, and it is high on her priority as well. Uh, later on in the week, uh, I ended up going to the Community Foundation on behalf of the Edmonton International Airport. A uh, very, very successful event out at the Entrex Centre. Uh, once again, I uh, joined a number of uh, colleagues here, uh, the Downtown Association Joint Meeting, and uh, a number of people that I met from the Downtown Association thought it was a great meeting. We got a lot of stuff uh, discussed and uh, possible answers in the future. Uh, also on uh, the Friday, uh, twinning a project of Highway 43, the announcement with uh, um, our Minister of Transportation and... Uh, and some of the gentlemen that were involved in the project itself. Uh, it was uh, announced at Center 2000 last Friday. On Sunday, I attended the, actually Saturday, Grand Prairie Friendship Center Sisters in Walk Spirit and Candlelight Vigil. Uh, it was a very, very uh, uh, somber event where there was a number of people that uh, showed uh, appreciation uh, and concern that uh, women, Native women, have been murdered in the past and they would like the federal government to sort of intervene a little bit and find out uh, some funding to maybe stop this. And uh, once again, as Mr. Thiessen said, uh, we had toured the new PARDS facility. It's twice the size, maybe three times the size of the uh, four times the size of their current facility. And... Uh, lots of potential 50 some acres of property there so with that that was my report thanks very much Councillor O'Toole Councillor Clayton thank you Mayor Given um, just quickly I also attended the official announcement of the opening of uh, twinning of 43 uh, and one note from that day that I thought was quite special was the fact that there's over 1100 kilometers of twinned highway now from Grand Prairie to Montana <laughs> which is probably one of the largest in, in Canada for a twinned highway. Um, as well, um, the Downtown Association, um, and uh, I also attended the Community Foundation Gala, which uh, a few other council members attended, and it was once again a great event put on by um, a great uh, organization within our community. So thank you. Oh, I also attended AMA, and Helen was incredible. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Tarrant. Thank you, Mayor Kevin. Um, I as well attended AUMA and uh, hats off to President Rice. It's a great event. Uh, one of the highlights for me was uh, speaking with our infrastructure minister, uh, Manmeet uh, Bular. Um, it seemed to be there was a, a lot of uh, interest in the way that schools are funded, and uh, there was a significant number of uh, communities that had issues with how schools are, are being rolled out and, and the different uh, uh, processes they use for that. So it's uh, glad you know to see we're not the only ones with that issue, and uh, you know hopefully those uh, those um, concerns went forward, and we'll see some some action taken on that. Um, as well, attended the uh, downtown uh, association meeting. Great, uh, great to meet with the stakeholders there. And uh, this past weekend, I was able to attend the uh, Suicide Prevention Resource Center uh, Chair Extraordinaire, and it was another uh, great event. Lots of money raised, and uh, it's great to see uh, the community support there. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, so we'll start with AUMA. Uh, I really enjoyed. I, I really do enjoy the resolutions of part of uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the conference. I think that's when we can voice our concerns and uh, and provide our feedback to the provincial government. Uh, and just to note, uh, since uh, uh, Helen keeps uh, teaching us things, but did you know that AUMA represents 86% of Alberta's population? <laughs> right. 29th, at a meeting with uh, uh, City Manager Serbach. Uh, uh, 30th, uh, Downtown Association uh, Council dinner and uh, the, the DTA board meeting the next day. So, yeah, uh, some of you mentioned, but sidewalks, street lights, infrastructure assessment, South Montrose site, York, uh, Germain Park, Relaxation Park. So, a number of... Uh, uh, very useful topics to be discussed. And I would uh, share with uh, council, my colleagues in council from the D Downtown Association Board uh, meeting the next morning. They are very, very appreciative of the time 
in the communication we have with them. So I think that we're both uh, respectful of, of each other and, and work together very well. Uh, Grand Spirit Foundation Management Committee meeting, Sisters in Spirit Walk, and the tour of the uh, new parts facility. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Uh, so along with the other members of council, I also attended the AUMA conference in Edmonton. Uh, on returning, I attended the Community Foundation Gala that was mentioned by Councillor Clayton and Councillor O'Toole. Uh, just of note there, uh, Councillor O'Toole was sitting with as a guest of Edmonton Airports, but uh, uh, the Senior Vice President of Regional Services for Air Canada uh, had a good opportunity to speak with him, and uh, he's interested in coming to the community to speak with the community about our uh, priorities for air service, and also to share with the community a little bit about how Air Canada does in business. So that was a great a connection in an unexpected forum, so that was uh, that was really useful. Um, the next day, I was uh, on hand uh, at the Tiny Hands of Hope event. Uh, Councillor McLean noted the fantastic growth in that, and I just really want to um, highlight the courage that the organizers had to take something that is uh, very difficult personally, um, but to find strength in that and to share that with the community and give an opportunity for others to find strength in that. This is for those that don't know, Tiny Hands of Hope is an organization that provides supports uh, to. Uh, uh, who are experiencing, uh, have experienced infant loss of children up to, I believe, two years of age. And uh, so they're working to provide, ensure that there are resources available in the community um, and that uh, in the community and at the hospital. So they've uh, done a great job of growing the community over these last couple of years. Um, and uh, I think it's taken a lot of courage to do that. Um, I, uh, on the second, I attended at lunchtime a open house for Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, this was a public open house to inform the community about Alcoholics Anonymous and what's available in the community. Um, it was really uh, an interesting point was made that Alcoholics Anonymous is intended to be anonymous, of course, but not invisible. Uh, they certainly want to maintain their visibility so that people who need help uh, know where to go. Um, I'll just share briefly uh, the fact that there are 14 meetings every week in the Grand Prairie area. So there are more than two meetings. Uh, there are two meetings a day. Um, some of those meetings are are open public meetings uh, that anyone can attend, and others are closed meetings. So there's about a, um, uh, an open meeting just about every day and a closed meeting just about every day, um, which was something that I was uh, surprised to learn. Uh, if anybody's looking to learn more, they can go to the local uh, Alcoholics Anonymous website, and that's GrandPrairieAA.com. So a very simple website. If they want to find out details and uh, I also attended the announcement of the uh, twinning of Highway 43. Congratulations to the provincial government for that. Uh, now we just have to continue on to the BC border. Um, on the 4th, I was also in attendance at the Sisters in Spirit uh, Vigil Walk. And on the 5th, I was back down at Muscogee Park to do a proclamation uh, of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month for the CIBC Run for the Cure. Uh, if I remember correctly, the run this year raised over $100,000, which is a, a great milestone for the community. In just the second year of having an official CIBC Run for the Cure event, uh, we've had a breast cancer run for a number of years, but this is just the second year now where we've had an official CIBC Run for the Cure. So congratulations to the organizers of that. And with that, that's all I have to report. And I think our meeting is adjourned.